So we'll hit nutrition properly now. Yep. Okay. So um, here's one for you. How would you eat to gain weight? Anyone want to lead that? Uh, well, do you want to do that? One and a half grams of protein per pound of body weight. Yeah, um, any bit of at it, least. Yeah. One and a half to two grams of, yeah, um, at least one and a half. Um, <clears throat> personally, carbs the same amount, the same amount of grams as that, because that's what I. Yeah, that's what about. you've worked out for you, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So remember, everyone's different, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've got quite a fast metabolism, me. I have to blood the carbs. You'd probably double your carbs, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, so I have, yes. I have quite high carbs. Everyone's mm. different on yes. food to grow, isn't it? But as, as I've gone older, I don't need, need as many carbs. I still do. Yeah, no. I yeah. Can't, I can't everybody mm. I just yeah. get fat around the middle, I do. Yeah, mm. yeah. <coughs> yeah everybody's yeah. different, yeah. aren't they? It Everyone's it's gold so depends what type of metabolism. I tried to push protein too, too high. I didn't really go much over the ground because uh, it didn't work for me. I was never, I just kept on pushing it. Yeah, we said that before coming up, didn't we? Too much excess protein just makes you weak and you're peeing, up, you're peeing money down the drain because, as you know, protein's different. The expensive, isn't it? Especially now, everything's gone up. You're looking at your chicken, your steak, your fish, your eggs. Everything's expensive. So, if you're taking crazy amounts of protein in the day, a day, you're just mainly pissing it away. There's no, there's no need to. So for me and him, I know we stuck at it. We only had ever had a gram per pound of body weight. So say you was 18 stone, you'd be having like 250, 260 grams. That always made us grow, you know what I mean? But, but Paul done it slightly different. Different, he had. Which probably makes... No yeah, offence, yeah. but you're a shorter man, innit? So uh -huh. maybe that worked for him, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe he's a taller man. You know, you'd need, like the lads here, you need more carbs in your diet. You know, you've got to base it around your own metabolism, really, haven't yeah. you? You learn as you go. But again, like what I said before about um, nutrition with bodybuilding, people go on about the post-workout meal. Your body can't possibly break down food in 20 minutes to half an hour to be used. The, nu the nutrients you eat through the day, your body will take after time. The being your body, your body will take them. The next meal you put in, the first 15, 20 grams of protein, about 15 grams of protein, what, what, get, what your body breaks down from that, will go to feed your white organs, your brain, your liver, and your kidneys. Yeah. We're not meant to be 18, 19 years old, so your body uses protein to keep itself alive yeah. before it builds a muscle. So your body's priority when you put protein in is to take it for the brain, the liver, the kidneys, all that, then what's left will build muscle. So you need to have the protein and the nutrients in your blood stream. Not after the workout, you need to be all the way through. Mm -hmm. That's why you're supposed to eat every three hours, keep it, keep it regular, yeah. so you can separate cat. There are always uh, nutrients in your bloodstream. So there's no way you can break them down in a 20 minute and a bottle window. And I think we all know where that come from, all, f all five of us now. Yeah. Where it, the, the 20 minute, we were down in the 90s, you were not Tim, but you know, you're a bit younger, but in the 90s, somebody brought a supplement company out, am I right? And they turned around and they were, they were doing seminars like we're doing today, and they were going around every gym, they had their own protein company, right, did they not? And then they were going, right, you've got to have a whey protein within 20 minutes of training. You know, they've done, they done seminars all around the country and it was just about getting the money in. You bought their protein and that spread like wildflower. Wildflower, didn't it? And everyone yeah. thought, they come to your gym, didn't they, and don't yeah. want member? The thing is as well, with uh, all these different types of proteins, what's the money you take before the KC? Yeah. KC. Oh, why would you buy another thing of protein? Just have your normal protein and crack a couple of eggs in it, there's no digestion. So why would you pay 60 quid for a tub of protein when your phone got out from the kitchen? Not very sure you're there, mate. Don't give eggs in it and digest all that. You know what I mean? It's all the money, mate. I think I think one of the uh, one, one of the questions probably about nutrition that I get asked most, but as opposed to what should I be eating, I genuinely get asked about when should I take creatine and yeah. how much should I take and does it work and it's one of those subjects where it's a supplement that people use and it's got a, a lot of hype but at the end of the day yes creatine works okay but creatine works as if you are at 99% of everything you're doing if you're working you're training 99% if your nutrition is completely on point, if you are 
exploring every single avenue you can possibly do, and then you add creatine to the mix, you can get a benefit. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I've got creatine. Yeah. So if you are just at eighty percent, it's going to make no difference at all. Well, I've I've been at night well hundred percent and used creatine and never got nothing out of it. I never got nothing out of creatine. I think it's just something they put out in the magazines when exactly. we were all so younger. It's a, it really is. It's one of those, it's one of those right. things that it may help you in a tiny bit, but otherwise, if you're putting two or three scoops in your drinks, you, you're wasting your money. Yeah. It's also hit and miss, like you say, you know. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't work for some, it doesn't work for others. Yeah, I Absolutely. never found it any beneficial myself. Like. Yeah. I've seen someone go amazing on it. Yeah. But it's very rare. What was he throwing in his creatine on no, me? <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. And um, there's loads of different types of it, isn't there? I mean, we, me and Pete used to work in a supplement shop in Liverpool, didn't we? And um, how many different types of creatines they bring out? There's loads, wasn't there? But well, they used to say as well, uh, there's a lot of things. Right. Again, to three years old. You know yeah. That was the other way to make money. Yeah. You five grand, don't you? Five grand, it makes money, man. But you used to hold your own 20 grand. Yeah, you're not getting that bad, man. Well, Barry, if your diet's got red meat in, you don't need it. Exactly. Probably the most people who were, you know, say you was on a diet and your diet involved a lot of fish and a lot of chicken, your creatine levels are probably a little bit low, so you might feel a little bit of benefit. I've always had red meat because I've got a fast metabolism, well, so I never ever got nothing. Out of creativity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone? Any questions on growing? You want to point out? Or your not growing, but more on vitamins. Oh. That was in the oh. nutrition room. Really. So what vitamins would you say are? Like, well, when I'm. You get it. I get it all the time. Okay. So my client say, "Oh, what vitamins should I take?" And I'm like, "I hate a lot of vitamins because it's got all in it. It's really, really low on everything, but mm -hmm. some vitamins are better than others." Well, all that I ever use and still use. Is that old fashioned desiccated liver and liver yeast? And that's from the 50s. Ah. Right. They work, they contain absolutely everything you need um, to bodybuild. Absolutely everything. Um, protein without calories, I think liver yeast helps um, your blood sugars as well, things like that. Desiccated liver's got all the um, B vitamins and everything, everything you need. Years ago, it used to be cheap. We used to go to the chemist by ours to buy big jars of buttons, but now the companies are getting on it and the market is now is there. And grass fed beef liver and all this shit. You know what I mean? It's just desiccated liver, but they do work. Um, one thing which I don't think you need, some people might disagree, is branch chain amino acids. Right? Um, Essential amino acids, because there's about three amino acids you hey, The EAAs. Uh, yeah. There's yeah. about three amino acids, what I've found in your, in your body, so you, you supplement them. Um, but with branched chains, basically, if you eat, the one I dieted, I used to eat different protein sources, because each one had a different amino acid spread. So if you eat from each source, you cook it. So I like chicken is different to turkey, turkey is different to steak, steak's different to fish. So if you have one of them for each meal, your box is going to go spend extra money on PCAAs. And walk around the gym with a massive big thing drinking it. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the, the clue is in the name. They call them supplements. So vitamin supplements. So if you're eating a, a good diet and you've got all the food groups covered, you shouldn't actually need any. You know, there are a couple of elements, I think vitamin D, some, some, yeah. some vitamin D and stuff like that. You can't produce yourself. You look into those type of things. Maybe towards but, the end of your diet, yeah. all of your food's really restricted. Exactly. You be missing some then. That's probably, I would say, the only time when it would be very advisable to look into and to supplement because you are not taking your full food groups because you're basically starving to death. It's like a lot of people, Paul, who won't eat like veg and salad and they don't want to eat none of that stuff in their diets. What I'd say to them, I'd say like, you know, take your vitamin D, take a multivit. Obviously make the high quality ones, like the Solgar ones. Solgar. Yeah, that's the best vitamin. They're the best vitamin company. They're expensive, but it's worth buying instead of buying shite out of Holland and Barry. You know what I mean? Just buy the proper quality ones and I'd have a vitamin D a day, a multivitamin and vitamin C and you're covered.
and you come there. That's if you don't eat what we're talking about. If you're having your fruit, your veg and your diet, your decent carbs and your protein, you'll find you don't need them. Cool. Got rich. Great question, probably for the whole panel individually, is that over your career, training career, did you try different uh, diets in terms of meals, how many meals you have frequencies and time, do you find there's, there's an optimal or there's much variation over having four meals versus seven meals and whether pushing a seventh meal maybe in the day yeah. or waking up at sleep time just to have an extra meal, whether there's actually any benefit to doing that or whether you're talking about the, the last percent. I'll have, tried, yeah, I'll have tried getting up in the middle of the night when I was younger and you know having pro meal replacement drinks we used to have and knocking two of them back and as I said all I had to did was wee more with the massive amount of protein but don't know but when, do you when think? you're getting ready for the competition when you're dieting for your competition you end up towards the if you do it right as it gets closer to the show you eat more meals because your metabolism speeds up your body burns uh, food more efficiently. So if I'd started on say five meals, I know by the time, because uh, I used to get myself right down, say four or five weeks out, like thrown, and then I'd start putting me, my metabolism was racing, I'd start hiding my food a tiny bit. Yeah. Eat every two or three days. So just say it was, I started on five meals. By the time the show come round, well, they didn't have to, people talking about carbon up. I was on about eight or nine meals. So that, uh, proper meals. So I, I just I just go into the show as as I was. Because if you're right, people go with this, that and the other about com com competition. If you're not right six weeks out, you're not gonna be right for the show. A apart from a little bit of water, a bit of fine tuning. So you should in theory, you should eat up to your show. So there should never really be a need to carb or zero carb, carb up. You should be getting bigger and tighter, which means your food goes up. Um, food is first and foremost when you're doing the show. There might be all these uh, tricks up people will do. But basically, if you get your, bod your body fat, you'll be gone six weeks out. And all you need to do is fine tune. And basically, the more food you eat, the bigger and the higher yeah. you should get. Otherwise, you can burn yourself away. You could have looked well at 15 stone six weeks ago. You stay on that same diet and you've got another six weeks to go. You look terrible. You need to raise your food a little bit. Most people, that's where having a good coach is, can come in, an experienced person, and go, you need to just up that. You tell you what, you need to throw an extra potato in this week at that meal and, you know, and keep up in your food so you don't lose muscle because you can lose it, can't you? You can. So, can you trust in the, the, the off season? Yeah. Would you say, actually, I'll have five minutes? Well, yeah, well, I've always just believed in five meals. I never done. I tried six or seven. And I was never off the but toilet. What you've got to remember, uh, apart from the last few weeks when you're putting your food up, which is mainly carbs anyway, your protein stays constant throughout the year. Whatever made you big will keep you big. So when you're getting ready for the show, you should only really have to mess about with your carbs and your fats. Your protein, although you might go to some cleaner sources of protein, but the grams of protein you eat per meal or in a day stays the same. But you more looking more off season, are you? What people done off season? I'm interested from your experience. Yeah. And uh, whether it does contrast uh, well, maybe focusing on the off season. Yeah, so which is probably the most of the majority of yeah, people are yeah, yeah. focus on diet. Is particularly if you've been in a profession where obviously you well you all as a yeah. is obviously you've got jobs and you have to work around that, is whether you say actually five, four or five meals is, is sufficient. Yeah. Or I saw particular benefit by okay. seven because of optimizing MPS and yeah, um, yeah. can I see it this way, right? When I was younger, I'd try and do six, seven or eight meals a day. And because of the metabolism I had, my metabolism goes sky high. And then somebody said to me, nah, you're eating too much. You're, the more you eat, the quicker your metabolism go. And this fella said to me, just have five and then I start, but make them decent big meals instead of small, like eight meals, that, which I was having when I was, a, I was a window cleaner. I was up and down the ladder all day and I was just burning away. But I was thinking the more meals I have, the better. And it never worked out that way. So what I done when it dropped to five meals, but it, they were bigger meals, I ended up starting to put on a bit more mass because when I was taking eight meals a day, see what Barry was saying before, when you're taking like the eight, it's usually at the end of a competition because your metabolism's through the roof, but off season, five done me when i tried to do eight i couldn't put on weight but when i done five i could start putting on size but there were five decent big ones you know with three or four hours in between the thing is also you've got to you've got to look at your own body type 
um, because I mean we've we've all experienced this with some coaches and stuff they basically they'll put out a diet or put out a plan that is just very g generic and we're all different we all work different jobs we all like different types of food there is so many variations and yes you're right we do have to try different things because what's right for one person might not be right for another and what is right for you you might not be able to do because you may not have the ability to stop and just have something to eat when you want to have something, something to eat so you've got to make whatever you're doing the best fit possible and that takes practice mm -hmm. uh, it's not something you'll get right first time just like when you're doing a competition prep you know you're not going to win the first time you go out you might be lucky and you might get it right first time but you do have to try different things because everybody's different. <coughs> I mean, there'll be people here who are lactose intolerant. There might be somebody here who's deciding to do all this on a vegan diet, etc., etc. All these things have impact, so it's not a one one size. That's where you've got to be care careful with these cultures, cultures yeah. gurus, or whatever they call themselves, that they're not just giving everyone a genetic diet because everyone's body works different. You can't eat this or you can't um, digest that. You might be able to. So <coughs> you can't just give out a genetic diet for everyone because it's low fat, um, high protein and medium carbs. I think that's going to work for everyone. Everyone's different. It's based on your metabolism, isn't it? What type of metabolism <laughs> you've got. Base your diet around that. And you'll know if you're a person who always has abs all, all year round, you've obviously got a fast metabolism. So you'll have to probably have more carbs than say, if you didn't see an app, do you know what I mean? Not personal to you, mate. But what I'm saying is, if you hadn't seen an app, your diet would be a lot different than him if he was abbed up all year round and you weren't. You obviously got a slower metabolism than maybe he has. So you'd probably have less carbs and he'd probably have more. Basically, you're learning all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And as you get older... You it is all on your body type, innit? As you get older as well, your metabolism changes, so you might need as much food. Now mine hasn't, but mine hasn't. Yeah, I still need a lot of food, hence the bag. My questions. No, sorry. Counted it on a bit of paper. Yeah, we had. We used to buy you buy a board book then, didn't you? I know the books would have say what 100 grams of like chicken had in, what 100 grams of potato is. You just look in your book and before you knew it, you knew what they were anyway. And that's right. That, the only thing with my fitness pal and all that, right, do you know that they count secondary protein? Right, so you're taking, so you know you like your spuds and your rice. It's have minimal amounts, doesn't it, of protein, your porridge. They count that up. So you think you're getting 200 grams of protein, but it's not first class. That'll never make you grow. Do you know what I mean? You, you should only count your protein from your protein foods, like your chicken, your eggs, your steak, you know, your whatever, your yeah, fish, yeah. whatever like that. Don't go into there and thinking, I've had kids give me diets and they go, yeah, I'm um, on 240 grams of protein. And I've gone, where? You're about 40 grams short here. Yeah, well, I went on my, but they're adding things what are in rice and it's secondary protein. All bodybuilders, most bodybuilders are only cast, don't know about all use, but first it's class protein, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is proper protein foods, like I've just mentioned. Never second class proteins like you've got in your potato and your rice. They don't matter. There's no aminos in them. Doesn't matter. So that's what my take on that my fitness pal is. Mm -hmm. Right, sorry, we've got some tuna music on down there. Right there. So um, we'll go on to losing fat. Nutrition for losing fat. Yep. Okay. And you want to start on that? Don't eat so much. No. <laughs> like like they pointed out, it, again it's a, it's a bit of a minefield for depending on your metabolism. There is some tried and trusted methods, which is just basically uh, taking less calories than you're expending. But we all know that that doesn't necessarily give you a good physique. You'll lose weight, but you don't necessarily lose body fat. You've got to... Well, you've got to remember, you've got people, these again, online coaches, who put you into a calorie deficit, or your macros and this, that and the other. And basically, the full fat kids who've lost weight and now they're just skinny fat kids. They've got no muscle tone, they've got no nothing because they're just counting macros. They put themselves in a calorie deficit, they haven't gone right, they need so much quality protein, so many quality carbs. They've just gone right, 
you can do this like Weight Watchers. You can you can have a cake day. You can do this. This is what they're doing, and they're charging people money for it. But it all so, some you know for all sounds and sexes. Some people, women want to get it because the dress size. So if you lose weight, you will. But it's not doing that for your body. No. You're just the same person, but smaller. You end up like a melted candle, innit? Yeah. When you see people do them crash diets, they just go, woof, the weight's all still here. Yet they lose it off the face and the shoulders and you think. Remember, you've got to feed a muscle. Muscle needs protein. That's your, your main thing that you should be doing, is making sure you're getting that protein every three hours. Yeah. Yeah. So all, these, anyway. all these people who are advocating um, calorie deficits, you've got to remember where the food comes from. You can't just go into a calorie deficit and think you're going to hold muscle or maintain muscle because you're not. You've got to make sure it's got all the quality nutrition or, or, and anything else in it. Well, I had a lad who, can't, who done all that, right? And I tell you what, at the beginning of it, he was a big kid, he was doing a competition, he was a big lad. And he went all that, all that calorie deficit, which me and him have never done. I know he's never done it, and I've never done it. We've always counted protein and carbs, and that's about it, right? And we got our fats from what was naturally in the fats. I never counted fats either. But I seen this kid, and he was on a calorie deficient all the time, one on one of them mad diets. And he went from pressing, honest to God, like say 60 key over his head. He couldn't press the Olympic bar at the end of his prep after 10 weeks. And he lost so much muscle. You know who he is, I'll tell you, man. He lost so much muscle. You wouldn't believe because he was possessed with being in a calorie deficit it's no good if you want to gain muscle you've got to eat that protein i wouldn't even count calories myself have you ever counted them i know you haven't no you haven't tell me protein carbs. carbs at the end of the day you've, you've, you've got to con your body you've got to con your body into letting go of its body fat your body doesn't want to let go of its body fat it's there for survival it's there for when you've got no food so your body is its natural state will always cannibalize muscle with yeah. more body fat always because it can survive with less muscle tissue it can't survive if it's got loads of muscle and no body fat well, muscle just stored energy in it yeah. that's all muscle is and just stored energy you mm -hmm. have to make sure that you're dieted in such a way that your body thinks that it can release this body fat because there's no danger of starving and there's various different ways of doing that which again goes down to personal body types mm -hmm. but you can't you can't just go down that route of not eating. Well about, um, the fats you put in your body because people will eat an egg they'll take the yolk out of an egg and eat the white and then put a spoon of peanut butter in why just eat the yolk because all of their all good fats why would you take a complete protein half it and then put peanut butter in it doesn't make sense but basically your fat should be not so fast so basically if i want more fast which i eat the whole leg anyway because i'm tight i won't throw the other half away um but you just have steak salmon or if you want more fat just cook your chicken on the grill on a grill thing on an um the grill today but the fact that keep your skin on your breast of chicken and the fat will cook through it not so fat why would you throw away good fats in order to put peanut butter or some other kind of New age thing. New age thing, yeah, fast. I don't understand it. So everything you do, food wise, should be as natural as possible. Mm. Like I said to you, didn't I coming up here, I coach online and some lad had sent me, I'd done his diet and his mate was paying some coach 259 quid. I don't know why the 59, I don't know. But he was paying him that, right? And he said, yeah, I'll have a look at this diet, what this lad's paying this for. And you know all it was full of? Bagels, wraps, cocoa pops, the diet had no nutritional value in it whatsoever. It was all shit. I said to him, where, where, do you, where, where are they cooking the meals? And that the way we always cooked our meals, you cook your five or six meals a day. Now everything wants to be done dead quick. So you're having your peanut butter in with your protein, you're having your cocoa pops. Uh, everything's like a fast food diet in bodybuilding now. What you're trying to do is try to put across diets what people like. Yeah? You see any rules on wraps and all that? Nice. Can suck in, get a yeah. But it's not going to make you look better any good. Food's got to be clean and have a function. Yeah, you're right. Have a function. No. Well, yeah, other people are eating bagels. Yeah. Bagels, bread. We do not eat bread. Yeah. We just don't eat bread. I always said bread gives you tits. <laughs> like, you know why? It's full of estrogen. It's full of estrogen. <laughs> If you look at a fat fella on a building site, he'll have lager, full of oestrogen, he'll have sarnies, won't he? 
and they're all just full of bread and next minute he's got a set of bangers on him uh, and, you know and that's why he's in all their messages and he's carrying in loads of water them types of fucking shit Inches, yeah. oh good bread swear bread but your protein is saying then about growing tips but when you look at your uh, your protein sources what's the thing you know soya protein your body well, a lot of, when you buy a protein uh, you want to look at the sources of protein because a lot of these protein things are oh, so eight so many percent whey and the rest of it's like from pea protein yeah and the cheapest one is soy protein what your body can't digest properly and soy protein, soy milk and all that can cause mental lactate and increases the uh, estrogen in men. So this is why you get low to 15 year old lads with boss Yeah, they have, haven't you, you can see, see them. them. Yeah, yeah, school. yeah. And, and they're saying it's like, <laughs> it's like a type of food. Yeah, <laughs> loads of bread. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. It's, it's Stay away from crumpets, wraps, bread. I think Arnold and that used to call it debt, white debt. No old sugar bread, nothing new. Yeah, yeah. They used to call it sugar white debt. They never ate it. I don't think none of the pro bodybuilders when we were all young, like Ronnie Coleman and Jay Cut, they didn't it's see like them eating a wrap and a sari and crumpets with jam on. And they were the best, they were the best of anything, weren't they? All them. You didn't see them eat food like that. You get up in the morning and eat basically chicken and potato, and chicken and rice, first meal, bit of broccoli. And all my meals, I didn't see breakfast, it wasn't breakfast, it was meal number one, meal number two. Breakfast is something well. Was that off season or competing, mate? Competing. Yeah, yeah. Competing. Yeah, I would get up and have yeah. chicken and potato, bit of broccoli, my second meal would be the same, but maybe with a bit of fish and things like that. Breakfast is a, a, a term we, we use, but really it's meal one, meal two. I was I've just yeah. porridge and eggs, mate. It's porridge and eggs, mate. Yeah, yeah. porridge and eggs. <coughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I see everybody's different, aren't they? Everyone's different. Yeah, yeah, I just said seven ten one four seven ten, isn't it? Every three hours you eat seven o'clock, ten o'clock, one four seven and ten o'clock. That's where I, when I diet for comp, that's what I do. <coughs> My changes, like you said about the change of calories, I don't count calories either, lads. I, um, I change my carbs. <clears throat> so, you know, I said before about the, my numbers, I've got 300 of each, generally. 300 protein, 300 carbs. When I'm cutting, I look at the mirror once a week. So, you know what I mean? Check my progress once a week. <clears throat> so I'll change my car, I'll, I'll reduce my carbs, not my protein. So I'll have high, medium, low days when I'm trying to trim off. So I'll have a 200 gram, a, 100, a, two, a 300, 200, 100 to keep trimming a bit off. But when I'm, when I'm coming down on my carbs, I look my protein a little bit more. Like you're saying about keeping the muscle fed. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> and as I say, if, if I'm changing through my 16 week diet, I'll just keep, you know, I'll keep doing that. Seventh day <clears throat> is where I'll have my cheap meal, which for me is a 10 inch pizza with lots of meat on it. So I'm having a pizza base, sorry to contradict what I said, but not eating bread. Have a, have a pizza base, a thin one, right? <clears throat> but that, that's my, go, that's my stop, thing to stop me going fucking mad, is I'm having that 10 inch pizza one, once a week, yeah? <clears throat> but as I say, generally it's, it's reducing, the, reducing the carbs. Um, I don't count fats, but I think they're about 30 to 40 grams in almonds. I eat a handful of almonds four or five times a day. So, as I said, but you say about changing, you know, learning as you go along. My first diet, I had three weeks to, when I first wanted to compete. The guy who owned a gym in Winsford of all places said to me, um, you're ideal to do this competition. So he said, you got three weeks to get ready. He said, eat as much boiled fish and boiled chicken as you can, nothing else. I stunk my mum's fucking house out, I did. You can imagine just boiled fish. And, um, so I learned from then to go to the, I say the six meals a day. I say that works for me, but again, you've been a bigger guy. Well, <clears throat> sorry, you, you probably you probably eight or nine meals a day. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, coming down to carb loading in the last week, um, and I, I could tell you a good story about Tim here, but I won't. <laughs> and I've had a time when he carving up ate the biggest baked potato you can find every hour for 15 hours. That's a lot of taters. Um, by the, I'd say by the end of it, 
but that's day three out from your camp because I carb load for three days, as I say, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday into a Saturday competition. Um, as I say, so that way, <clears throat> having that was around about 600 and odd grams of carbs, if I remember right, um, which took some stuffing in. I've learned from then I use rice because it's the, the amount of carbs in rice is more than potato, as you all know. So I, I use rice and potato in between. But again, I say a guy your size, you're going to get on stage, you're going to be 20 stone, aren't you? So you know what I mean? You'd, you'd be you'd be putting well over a thousand grams of carbs on that first day, wouldn't you? Again, that, that would, depends sorry, mate, on that, his that, metabolism. That's what I project for you if that was, it? That was the way you're going. Yeah? No, I was running as big as him, but I had to do a thousand grams a day. Even when yeah. I was a window cleaner, I was doing a thousand grams a day. Well, yeah, yeah honestly. Uh -huh. so this this basically goes to prove the point here because I was doing forty grams a day, and that was loading. I worked quite happily for four weeks on virtually zero. Now that is just because that's me. I can do that. So well. this is where everybody's different comes comes in, and yeah. you have to practice. You have to have a go at it. Yeah. If you're ever thinking about competing, plan it for before you go on holiday. Make yeah. it a pseudo competition or whatever. Or even if you're not considering competing and you just want a tool set that you can use to as a, a go-to for losing weight to go on, go on holiday, plan your 16 weeks and do it. You've got to do it. You've got to, you've got to see it all the way through because until you do it that first time, and you say, I've started here, and I've finished here, and I look like this, then you will always wonder whether you could do it. And once you've done it once, I mean, I've competed, I've competed probably about six or seven times, and I think I added up. Over a period of 10 years, I lost, I lost 37 stone. Obviously, gaining it back for the next competition, losing it next, but I've been able to lose 37 stone. Mm -hmm. And that is a tool set you find yourself when you plan it and you write it down and you know what worked for you. I know, even though I'm not competing anymore, if I wanted to look like I was ready to go on stage, it would take me a minimum of 16 weeks, probably 20 weeks. I'd have to start here, I'd have to do this, and if I did that, at the end of it, I'd look like this. And once you've done it once and you know you can do it, you can do it again. With slight changes, as you can so you'll improve there, the experience. It does, it does change a little. You'll bit improve bit. the experience. And also, yeah. hopefully, <clears throat> as you put on a bit more muscle mass, it, the body fat loss will become a little easier because you've got bigger engines, you're burning more calories. But once you've done it, it's it's just something you can go to whenever you want. I must finish what I was saying about the three days of carving. I say carb loading. Um, I'll do a high day and then I'll reduce it. Then I'll reduce it again. Because to put that, say, 600 grams or 1,000 grams, as I say, for myself, well, 600 grams for myself, that will bloat me to hell. So I'll reduce it by a third the next day and reduce it by a third for the day before. I just wanted to add that little bit so you didn't think I'd pile them all in for three days because you'd feel like a fucking overgrown, overblown balloon, you know? So a point on that. Everyone, everyone <coughs> piles up differently, don't they? Yes, yeah. Harry, um, build up. I get as low as I can get to a little bit and then I'll start eating. As long as your body fat's gone, you can always mess with the water. As long as your body, body fat's gone, and then I'll eat up and keep on eating up so I won't ever get to a point where I have to carve up. I will be flat six feet up and then eat up. And then, and then obviously with this, this process works for you better. So yes. Everyone, everyone is different. Mm -hmm. You've just got to work out what works for you, so trial and error. <laughs> I know, but Tim, that's where if you've never competed before, that's where you do. Well, they weren't coaches when we started. It was just someone who used to compete in the gym and you'd go and they go, you're not ready yet, mate. Take that out of your diet, do this, do that. And it's just all on the eye, isn't it? You've got to go to a, you've got to plan on competing. You know, just go to someone with experience who's done it. Don't go to one of these coaches who's done one show and got third with three in the class and it's on his profile, you know, third Mr. New Brighton and all that. Just swerve him. You want to go to someone who's had a bit of success, isn't it? Just go to him and go, you know, will you look at me once a week? If you look at coaches now, right, and I wonder how the coaching, if you can't get yourself right, how can you get anyone else? Yeah.
If you never want to show yourself, how are you getting people to win shows? You never found a method no. for doing it. Do you know what I mean? So how are you telling others to do it? Mm -hmm. okay. Any questions? <coughs> Any more nutritional questions or we can we move on to the next topic? We have think? How much water do you guys drink? That depends on the time of the off-season. <coughs> off-season, about three or four litres I do a day. Yeah. Try to get that in. I don't know. I've done up to 10. Well, the last week yes, you do up to 10. I've done up to 10, but not in mean, minutes. I've done up to 6. Silly amount. I've gone up to 10. Silly you, you, you drink and you pee, you drink and you pee, you drink and you pee. Yeah, 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 yeah drinking, yeah. It's stupid. You don't need, you don't, I don't need 10 litres. No. I would do 10. 